Autolite and its 96,000 dealers present Suspense. Tonight, Autolite brings you Too Hot to Live, a suspense play starring Mr. Richard Widmark. Hey, you! Freeloader! What? We don't sell tickets on this freak. Well, it was empty. I didn't think anybody'd mind. We're slowing down for a crossing. I don't want to find you when I come back. Where are we? Half mile from Marcus Junction. Thanks. Forget the thanks. Just beat it. Before somebody inquisitive starts asking questions. Yeah, don't they always? The train rolls by, slowing, and the crossing bell warns that death is here. I don't recognize it, though. I walk toward Marcus Junction. Toward death. In just a moment, Mr. Richard Whitmark in the first act of Too Hot to Live. Well, Hap, how are the hobgoblins? Well, Halloween isn't here yet, Harlow. Uh, soon will be, and that means the time has come to have your car made ready for the cold driving days ahead. And your friendly Autolite spark plug dealer is the man to see. And what'll he do, Harlow? Why, your Autolite spark plug dealer will winterize your car, put in antifreeze, change the oil and grease. And check the spark plugs, too! Thanks, Johnny Plug Check, for a worry-saving reminder. Because spark plugs are the very heart of your car's ignition system. These are better than ever. You mean spark plugs need winterizing, too? They sure do, Hap. And that's why it pays to have your Autolite spark plug dealer replace worn-out spark plugs with world-famous ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs. Autolite spark plugs, you know, are ignition-engineered to operate as a perfect team with your car's ignition system. And that's why you can't buy better spark plugs for your car than Autolite. So, folks, see your friendly Autolite spark plug dealer. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. And now, with Too Hot to Live and the performance of Mr. Richard Widmark, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in... Suspense. The sun is 11 o'clock high and starting to pucker the tar road leading into Marcus Junction. I'm heading in. Sweat's beginning to streak through the old suntan uniform and my shoes are sucking tar every time I lift them. The sole of one boot busts loose and starts flapping against the road. That's bad. A drifter needs a good pair of shoes. And I'm on the drift. Marcus Junction. No different than a thousand others like it. About a mile square of small buildings all pasted together. I walk a couple of blocks without finding a shoemaker. The town's almost empty this Saturday morning. And then a door opens ahead of me and a big man steps out. Really big, both ways. Big high, big wide. He's wearing steel-rimmed glasses screwed up tight above the pug nose of his round face. And six full inches of hat brim circle the pink flesh like a halo. Hi, good morning, son. My name's Benjamin. Benjamin Maxwell. Oh, good morning, Mr. Maxwell. Uh, say, uh, Benjamin, me... son. Call me Benjamin. That's the handle that shakes his pump. <laughs> What's yours, boy? Jeff Casey. Jeffrey or Jefferson? Jefferson. Jefferson. That's a good name. Uh, yeah. Now, look, don't, uh, don't think I'm changing the subject, but uh, where can I get this fixed, Benjamin? Well, pretty socks. <laughs> yeah, they are at that, but uh, who'll take care of this shoe? I'm going down to Stacy's for a Coke. Shoe fixtures right next door. Come along, Jefferson. As we turn to walk, I see his left side. Gun holstered high up on his hip and the gold star with the word sheriff glinting in the sunlight. Still wearing your old army clothes. I hear those duds wear like iron. You just throw them away when they start to rust. <laughs> Uniforms wear forever. These have seen their last war. What were you in, boy? Air Corps, Captain. Pretty uniforms, sweet pay, and lots of respect. You miss it, Jefferson? Maybe I do. What are you looking for now? I'm not looking for anything, just... Living, more or less. Oh, man ought to find more to do with his life than that. It's all the same to me. I could die today and it wouldn't make any difference. Eh, you got a bad taste in your mouth, but you'll spit it out someday. Mm. Say, how do you like this weather? 
it gets any warmer, it'll be almost too hot to live. Uh, in a manner of speaking, you understand. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Uh, here's the shoe repair. I'll be next door. Leave your shoes and waddle in on them pretty socks to yours. <laughs> I'll buy you a drink. Coca coffee. The shoemaker tells me that my shoes will take a couple of hours, so I start next door to join Benjamin. I don't know, maybe I'm feeling pretty good, but I pull an old schoolboy trick of mine. I take off my socks, roll them up, and throw them on the counter with my shoes. Then I walk outside to feel the cool, shaded cement prickle up through the bottom of my bare feet. Through the store window next door, I see the four people in the restaurant. Benjamin waves for me to come in. Inside the entrance, a blonde waitress is arguing with a tall sliver of a man who's showing about three inches of wrist and shin bone below the edges of his clothes. The squat, moon-faced grill man has his pop eyes focused intently on the argument. I go in, walk over to Benjamin and sit on the next stool. Oh, Jefferson. Hi, Benjamin. Came for that coffee. In a minute. Oh, she's Rachel's about finished. Try. try it somewhere else, Pop. Let me alone now. I'm busy. And all her sins must find her out. She's a Jezebel and kin only to the devil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll find it on the menu next week. Now find yourself a street corner. Get it out of your system. Oh, uh, you are bad. Bad beyond all hope. See you around, Pop. I don't hope. The girl plays rough. Oh, that's just Rachel's way, Jefferson. Uh, I see you lean to bare feet. What's yeah. your friend having, Buster? Benjamin, Rachel. Maybe smart to tag nicknames on people, but my folks figured me for a Benjamin, and I'd like it that way. Sure, Buster. Well, it be, soldier. Black coffee, lady. And don't let the uniform throw you. I'm no soldier anymore. The Hollywood line of her mouth twists up into a lopsided kind of inviting grin as she turns to get the coffee. I watch the dark shadows that follow the rippling lines of her uniform when she moves. Rachel is quite a woman. All woman. Coffee. Barefoot. Like you, soldier. Your friend's real pretty, Buster. You think everybody's pretty. He's a doll. You'll be around long, soldier? Long enough to get my shoes fixed, Rachel. Rachel. <laughs> you know, that name doesn't go with you. It's a name. Too bad you're moving on soon. New faces are scarce around here. Especially one like yours. Well, I've got some laud in force. Will I see you before you go, Jefferson? I'll find you, Benjamin. Do that, boy. I'm afraid to face that heat out there. Now, you behave yourself, Rachel. Yes, well. You like playing it tough? Under it all beats a heart of gold. Mm-hmm. Tell me what it's like in the world outside, soldier. Hey, uh, Rachel... Why don't you put up some more coffee? Tend to your bacon, lover. I got company. Your boyfriend? Lover boy there? No, that's Kenny. He's keeping company with a hot grill. You oughtn't to talk about me like that, Rachel. It's not very nice. Well, then don't bother me while I'm with my friends. Hey, soldier, I'm off about now. Let you and me go out to Carnival for a couple hours, huh? Hey, you. You let her alone. Don't you go with her. You hear? Yeah, I hear, Kenny. Well, I'd, uh, I'd like to, Rachel, but uh, how do I go barefoot? Oh, forgot. Got any other ideas? Yeah, matter of fact, I live upstairs over this greasy spoon. Let's go up and mix ourselves something cool while we wait for your shoes. You can't do that. It isn't nice. It don't look right. Don't it? Come on, let's go, Rachel. Don't you? No, you can't. I... I'll stop you. I'll go hash some potatoes, lover. My arm, soldier? No. No, Rachel. Hey, look, I'll get someone to, to tend here. I'll, I'll come right up. You do, and I'll barbecue you on your own grill. We go out, and my feet scruff over the shaded pavement as we pass through the doorway on the left. I follow her up a flight of stairs and into a small box-like apartment. Living room, bedroom, kitchen, and bathroom. Be it ever so humble, this is home. Let's kick out a wall or something. The windows don't help much, but the drinks will. Hey, why do you have to lean into the kitchen? Why not just walk in? Fresh varnish on the floor. The heat don't let it dry. It's a long reach for a long drink. 
It's a long day. Well, here you go, soldier. Don't you believe in mixing anything with your liquor? What for? The cubes will melt. Hmm. What do we drink to, soldier? The heat. The heat. Cools you off, don't it? It burns its way down my stomach and explodes. That's my good, pores isn't it, open soldier? and the perspiration oozes down. Yeah, let's have another. She's still Hello, talking, there. but I'm going numb. Let's drink the to heat, my conscience. No food I shouldn't be drinking. You're real Who cares? Cute, I'm getting foggy. She's drifting closer. I don't know who kisses who first. Bitter tears, tears of loneliness and regret. Let's drink to Everything's moving time. around. Like feathers in a high wind. You're real and Sometimes one drifts in through the fog. We're drinking. How many? I don't know. Breathing, sucking down scorching <laughs> air, hot, damp waves of heat. Clumsy soldier. Here's She's another close. glass. Can smell perfume, cheap like tin earrings. Wow. Black rolling in, black velvet. And the shimmering heat, wavering like plucking a taut string. Wavering, wavering. There's a steady sound, sharp, smart little cracks. I tear my eyelids oh my apart and a flash of ceiling Get whirls by. The purple myself. red mass is coming toward my face, and when it hits, there's a sound in the ceiling moving the other way. Laugh this off. Laugh now, I don't. A you? frozen kind of pain is seeping through to my brain, and I can make Wait. out a voice now. Then laugh. I want to hear you laugh. I get my hand up to my face and I wipe my eyes. Come on, wake my up. My hand comes away you wet. hear me? Ticky and red. The ugly purple mask comes. Awake ah. now? Swell. I got something for you. Let me alone. In there, in the corner of the kitchen. See how she's lying there? Take your hands off me. That's how I found her. You beside her, your filthy hands still tied around her throat. What's the matter with my hands? It's sticky. That's varnish and blood, your blood. See that knife in her hand? She cut you trying to stop you. You killed her. You killed Rachel! He doesn't make any kind of sense. The bathroom doors open and I stagger toward it, stepping on broken glass, pain stinging, remembering bare feet. The open shower waiting for me. I turn the handle of the cold water and I half throw myself into the shock of the stream. I'm coming alive. Reaction setting in. Fright. He said I'd killed him. Hey, Sarah! Benjamin! Hey, Benjamin! Come up here! I got a dirty killer for you! That lousy friend of yours killed Rachel! Come and get him! Kenny shouting out the window in the other room to Benjamin. I gotta get away, I gotta think. What happened? What? I get through the bathroom window out into the glare of the sun. My feet hit the scalding tar of the marquee. I scramble across it, drop to the street. A narrow alley and I'm running down it toward the fence that blocks off the far end. A garbage can near the fence and a woman putting something into it. I jump, reaching for the fence. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Let me go, let go! Pick up that garbage, you Let go, I didn't do it! What do you mean? I saw you kick it over. I'm not going to clean up that mess. I didn't kill her! Take your hands off me! Why would I kill Rachel? Why would you kill... All right, Jefferson. Come along and tell me why you killed Rachel. Autolite is bringing you Mr. Richard Widmark in Too Hot to Live. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Hey, Hap, did you hear about the wise witch? Yeah, what about her, Harlow? She brought her broom in for a tune-up. The Autolite spark plug dealer tightened the straws, tightened the handles. And check! The spark plugs, too! <laughs> he would have if that broom had had him, Johnny Plugcheck. Spark plugs are the heart of a car's ignition system. 
One of the keys to efficient engine operation. And did the witch understand, Harlow? Why, sure, Hap. Being a sage sorceress, she knew all about ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs. The spark plugs that are world famous for quality and dependability. Why, she even knew that Autolite spark plugs are used as original factory equipment on many leading makes of America's finest cars and trucks. Did she know it pays to have spark plugs winterized, too? She sure did, Hap. And she knew the place to go was to her friendly Autolite spark plug dealer. Because he can put in antifreeze, change grease and oil... And check the spark plugs, too! Yes, folks, see your friendly Autolite spark plug dealer and have worn-out spark plugs replaced with ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs. And whether you choose the resistor type or the standard type, you can be sure you can't buy better spark plugs for your car because you're always right with Autolite. And now Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Richard Widmark in Elliot Lewis's production of Too Hot to Live, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Benjamin is leading me out into the sweltering street again. The sun burns into my flesh, accusing as if to cause the murder to flow out of my open pores. And Benjamin walks beside me again. Not holding me, just talking, asking questions which I can't answer. Why'd you do it, son? I didn't kill her, Benjamin. I, 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 I don't remember, but I know you I didn't kill her. You don't sound sure, Jefferson. Don't you know? Well, we were drinking. I blacked out. Drunk unconscious. You could still move around. Could do what was done in that apartment. But I couldn't. Why would I want to do that? Maybe you played too rough. Maybe she tried to stop you. Cut you with a knife. Why did you run away? I, I was scared. Kenny said my hands were around her throat. Well, I have to lock you up, and then I'll go back and have a good look around. Maybe I'll find something. And if you don't? Rachel's dead, Jefferson. Wasn't premeditated, but that don't excuse it. She's still dead. They'll try to hang me. Why can't I remember what happened, what led to this? The sweat's rolling down Benjamin's forehead, collecting along the top of his glasses, sliding into his eyes. They smart and snap shut. He has to stop, try to rub the sting away. I slap at his glasses, knocking them off his face and grab for his gun. His arm comes down fast, hard, chopping at my hand, numbing the arm to the shoulder. And the gun falls to the road. I run, hobbling up and down, lopsided, trying to get away from Benjamin and from the burning and torn feet under me. Come back. You can't get far. I'll get you anyway. I'm running again down the burning streets, out to the end of town toward the railroad. I run till my legs slide away from under me. And then I crawl, dragging a body that has no feeling, a dead weight that robs my arms of their strength. And finally, finally steel rails glisten ahead as I lay sprawled out. My heart and lungs going crazy in my body. Something, something starts down in my chest. Spreads up to my throat. Spilling out of my mouth. <laughs> I've had enough! An hour has passed, and the sun is moving away toward the west. No trains have passed, but it's all right. I know what I have to do now. Find Kenny, and one way or another force him to tell the truth, for he must be lying. I lick my handkerchief and I wipe the dried blood off my hands and feet. I comb my hair, I throw away the army shirt and move back to town. Stepping gently, I make my way up the back streets to the restaurant. Pulling my pants down low to cover as much of my bare feet as possible, I step inside. There's a stranger behind the counter. Well, howdy. Hi. Say, uh, where is everybody in this town? Oh, most are out at the carnival. Some are looking for a killer roaming around. Yeah, I heard about him. Heard he was picked up a couple of miles out. Good deal. You know, Rachel worked here. Yeah, I know. Say, uh, where's Kenny? Oh, he's out at the Clovis place. You wanted to be the one to tell Rachel's folks about, you know. Uh, sure, sure. 
Well, I, I guess I ought to go out there and pick him up. I, I don't know the place too well. How do I get there? Just follow this road down. About a half a mile out of town, you'll find a dirt cutoff. Can't miss the mailbox. Thanks. Say, if you miss him, who will I say was asking? Just tell him his cousin Jim was here. Well, pleased to have met... Hey, you ain't wearing shoes. You, you're the one. You're the killer. Run, run, run again. Another alley, blistering pavement, cement ripping in the jagged rocks again. Time's running, too running out. Benjamin will know where I'm going. Out to the main highway, pants pulled low, thumb up in the air. Ah, here comes my ride. He's got to stop. He's got to stop, please. Happen, son. Oh, thanks. Thanks, mister. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. But I'm not going far. Well, I- I'm just going out to the Clovis farm. I know the place. Why are you going there now? I'm a cousin at Kenny's. I'm going to meet him out there. I don't place you. I'm visiting from back east. <laughs> You're not wearing shoes. <laughs> yeah, that's a silly thing, isn't it? I, I lost my shoes while wading barefoot in a stream. Didn't help my feet any. Uh, what stream is that, fella? Well, you, you know the one. I, I I don't know the name of it. It's it, it's out there in the woods. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think I know the one. Yeah, this is the dirt road you want. The house is over the rise. Thanks again. I'll see you. I limp up the rising dirt path. At the top, I turn for a look at my ride. He's swinging around toward town. Benjamin will get to me, and soon. An old two-storied farmhouse rises out of the cleared fields around me. A big gray barn stands off near the house, and two old cars are sitting empty behind it. Kenny's got to come to one of them. I'll wait. Time. Still running out and away from me. Little shimmering waves of heat rise off the tin hoods of the cars. Here he comes. Now or never. Hey! Help! Quiet! Quiet or I'll break you up. I want the truth, Kenny. The truth and I have to kill you for it. I didn't kill Rachel. You did. I didn't. I didn't. You killed her. You were crazy jealous. No. Yes. You came to check up. You found us drunk and you got wild. You killed her. I didn't. I can prove it. How can you prove it? That wasn't three minutes from the time I left the restaurant and the time I called Benjamin. Not enough time to get up there, kill her, and bring you around. Three minutes. I can prove it. That's all the time. You did it. You have cut hands from a knife. Those hands were still around her throat when I came in. You killed Rachel. And there it is. He isn't lying about the three minutes. That gloating smirk on his face tells me that. I had killed her. The horror of this afternoon had been for nothing. I tried to save my life and instead I'd proved myself guilty. Tied the rope finally and for all time around my neck. Shoot him! Don't just stand there, shoot. He's the man who killed your daughter. He stands there watching. The gaunt sliver of a man with shins and freshly scarred wrists exposed below the edges of his clothing. A double-barreled shotgun is cradled in his arms, but he just looks at me. A wild fire striking out of the black pupils of his eyes. Shoot him. He killed your daughter. He killed Rachel. So you're her father. I I thought it was just another nickname. She was no daughter of mine. She was born to me, and I named her Rachel from the Bible. But she was the daughter of Satan. I'm sorry, Mr. Clover. Go on, shoot him. Because of him, Rachel's dead. She turned away from me. But within me, the voice was strong. I followed her, begging to the place where she lived. I'm sorry. I I was drunk, crazy. In that apartment, the stench of drink like an evil cloud... You, lying there, drunk with the devil's fever. You were there? Shut up, you crazy old fool. And it came to me, like a voice from on high. And I knew what I must do. You killed her. It wasn't me, it was you. Now you did it. Why couldn't you keep your mouth shut? And you knew he did it, Kenny. You tried to make me believe that I'd been the one. Why? You, you and tramps like you, always keeping her from me. 
coming along every time. But I couldn't know this, Kenny. You didn't care. You laughed at me. You made Rachel laugh at me. I passed the old man when I went up. I knew as soon as I walked into the room. You tried to blame it on me. Why, well, why not? It wasn't the crazy old goat who killed her. Now you killed her. And you'll die for it. Give me that gun, old man. No, Kenny, not now. Come on, turn around, soldier. No. Turn around and see it when it happens. Put up your gun, Kenneth. No. No! Get up, Jefferson. We'll go home now. The sun is moving down low in the skies, and a cool, light breeze has come up from somewhere. I'm leaning back on the front seat beside Benjamin, breathing deeply, evenly, feeling the goodness of just living seep through. In the back seat, old man Clovis sits, staring ahead, not even aware of the blanket-wrapped body of Kenny lying on the floor at his feet. If you hadn't been so eager to run, I could have saved your feet a lot of wear. I knew you weren't a murderer, son. You knew? I went back to the apartment. Old stories there, in the varnish on the kitchen floor. No bare feet around the body, but lots of hobnailed boot prints. You cut your hand on broken glass in the living room. It bled. (laughs) And I was running. Well, you can stop running now, son. Stay here in town with us, huh? There's lots for you to do. Thanks. Well, it's been quite a day, Benjamin. Sure has been a scorcher. Glad to see the sun going down. On a day like this, it's almost too hot to live. No, don't say that, Benjamin. It never gets that hot. Suspense, presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Richard Widmark. Hey, uh, Hap, did you hear about the ghost who got stiff on Halloween? How come, Harlow? The laundry starched his sheet. Oh, that must have been (laughs) cornstarch. Well, this is no corn, Hap. It's good advice. Get your car tuned up and winterized now. And remember, Autolite makes more than 400 products for cars, trucks, planes, and boats in 28 plants coast to coast. These include complete electrical systems used as original equipment on many of America's finest cars. Generators, coils, distributors, voltage regulators, wire and cable, starting motors, and electric windshield wipers. All engineered to work together perfectly as part of the Autolite team. All engineered to give you unexcelled Autolite service. Don't accept electrical parts supposed to be as good. Ask for and insist on Autolite original factory parts at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. Mr. Widmark may currently be seen in the 20th Century Fox production, Daryl F. Zanuck's No Way Out. Next week on Suspense, Mr. Herbert Marshall as star of Victoria Cross. And in weeks to come, you will hear such famous stars as William Holden, Cary Grant, Ozzie Nelson, and Harriet Hilliard, all appearing in tales well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Too Hot to Live was written for Suspense by Sam Rolfe. And remember next week on Suspense, Mr. Herbert Marshall in Victoria Cross. You can buy world-famous Autolite resistor type or standard type spark plugs, Autolite stay-full batteries, Autolite electrical parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. When you give your time or your dollars to the 1950 Red Feather campaign, you're giving to the best possible cause. Your community chest benefits everyone. Won't you help now? This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting. (laughs) 